So the topic of this session, which is a fair day's pay for a fair day's play, I mean, it gets down to the nuts and bolts, really, doesn't it? A lot of our decisions in life come down to money and whether we have it and whether, um, whether we are happy with the way that we received it. Um, clearly, a big element in this sort of discussion is probably the issue of trust. I think in, in a lot of elements of these transactions, there's not um, as much trust as there could be. I mean, I should declare my interest in the discussion as well. I'm someone who's had royalty uh, income in the past. I'm someone who has felt that I've been ripped off by digital book publishing platforms. I won't name the particular platform, but I thought I didn't get paid what I was supposed to get paid. I've ended up during the course of the digital revolution going from being paid more as a student writing for my first newspaper, giving individual contributions in Sydney, to um, ending up contributing to some of them for free, even though it was the exact same big metropolitan newspaper. So there's lots of tensions and changes there. And I won't even pretend to be completely um, neutral, but I will try to be fair in the way that I sort of manage the discussion here. I'm wondering, John, if you would like to, to kick off with some thoughts on... Surely, but by the sounds of it, Ryan, maybe I should moderate and ask you some questions. <laughs> sounds, like you know, sounds like you know a lot about it. Um, well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan, uh, um, John Higgins from Digital Europe. I, I think... Um, Maybe I can explain digital Europe by also telling you a story that sets the scene and to some extent describes um, my take, our take on, on this debate. So um, a few years ago, I was on a, it was a panel not as prestigious as this, uh, Ryan, certainly not with such a good moderator. Um, and uh, I, was t I was with um, a woman called Caroline Thompson and she at the time was the chief operating officer of the BBC. And she said to me, oh, I'm so pleased to meet somebody from the organization that founded the BBC. I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I think, you know, you must be mixing me up with somebody else. No, and she said, no, no, you probably don't know the story then. That um, about 75 years ago, one of my predecessor organizations, because I was running the UK Tech Industry Association at the moment, was the British Radio Equipment Manufacturers Association. <laughs> British Radio Equipment Manufacturers Association, which gradually combined with other bits and pieces to become the tech industry association uh, in the UK today. Um, and into just a slight segue, if I look at my members today, I can trace in many countries in Europe, their sort of histories go back, you know, 100 years for when they were the tech uh, company supplier associations of the day. But anyway, in the UK, we, one of our organisations that was one of our predecessors was this uh, Bremer, the British Radio Manufacturers. And, and so they created these radios and then, I mean, I'm sort of paraphrasing a little bit now, they said, oh, great, we've got these radios, well, what should we do with them? And mm -hmm. said, well, I don't know, we've got, nobody's got any content. Uh, so they gathered together... Um, some singers in the, on the seventh floor, I think it was, in a building in London, and got them to sing some stuff. And, and, and so started what was the British Broadcasting Company, Limited. And then gradually that turned into the uh, British Broadcasting uh, Corporation. And, and I think that story, which is absolutely true, you can look this story up, um, you know, I, I think that absolutely typifies the attitude of the tech sector towards the providers of content, uh, which I, th I think is a bit of a demeaning term, but I can't think of any other one, um, uh, in that uh, we, we need it, the tech industry needs it, because really it's what um, all of us use the tech stuff that we have um, for. It's the sort of, it's the primary purpose. So I'd, I'd just start off with that as my sort of... Um, you know, summarising our position really is that we need you. We absolutely need all this uh, wonderful digital content because I was going to say because nobody buys tech stuff for its own sake. I mean, they do a bit these days, but on the whole, I think that's the sort of baseline assumption. They buy it as a way to get they the content. They buy it as a way to get mm -hmm. the nice lady singing on the seventh floor. Yeah. So, Alphonse, yes. you've been the canary or the leader in the coal mine. Um, those nice words and those principles, have they translated into reality in Sweden? That has been quite positive, quite 
embracing of the digital revolution and you've been there throughout all, from the development of Spotify to oh, yes. the Pirate Party getting into yes. Parliament and so on. So what's your take on it? Well, you? first of all, I have to say that I'm very glad that you decided to go on content in your BBC idea. I think BBC is so much better with content. But So, <laughs> but thank you. Uh, well, you are right. It's a process, and we've been through... I, I wouldn't say that we are ahead of everyone else in Sweden, but we have gone through uh, some of, of, of the processes that I think others are going through right now. But it's still about creatives and consumers. It's not that much more difficult to me. It's When I see copyright, mm -hmm. it's not really whether or not copyright is fit for the digital age, Copyright is fine, it's the way we use it. Mm -hmm. And we need to go back and really realize that copyright is for the creators to be able to create new content for the consumers. I'm looking at you, of course. I usually do when we have these debates. So, uh, but I do, there are still problems. And problems is that we have great middlemen, we have great people working, making available but not enough is really getting back to the creators. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to say that it's always... And is that a problem with how collecting societies work? Is it that we, in fact, obsess too much about copyright? No. Should we get our money from other sources? No, the thing the is, that I don't think that me or the creators want anyone to give us... You know, it, It's not a matter of us being needy. Mm -hmm. I think we need the freedom of choice. So by having more transparency, we as creators could choose who to work with, which are the publishers that actually create the added value, as the consumers with more transparency could use services and business models that are fair in a way. And I think that could be a way of, of, of self-regulating, so to say. And, and so I'm very much in favor for transparency in, in really, I think that would, given a opportunity for, for those and the stakeholders and business models that actually have something long-term and sustainable to offer. Mm -hmm. Now, Michelle, you're, you're a bit of an administration geek. Is that a fair <sighs> I description? don't know if you're an administration geek, but yeah. I will certainly correct an administration mistake. Uh, <laughs> satisfaction wasn't sold to an American lawyer, but to a German company about two years <laughs> ago uh, for a lot of money. Um, I, I, there are lots of problems in the current market. I mean, we, we've, you know, panels before have talked about that. But I'm quite happy, actually. And, and, and I believe the artists which are working with us must be happy because we have more demand and not less demand. So I believe we must do something right. Um, there are problems. Um, some of them are difficult to 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 deal with because we have we're talking sometimes to um, uh, companies that essentially do not really recognize the need of working with others. Mm -hmm. They feel that this self content and um, it's in not a always easy. In a monopoly sense or in a lazy sense? Monopoly is a negative word. <laughs> <laughs> so I would not abuse them of being in a monopoly. Yeah. Uh, but they certainly not use, I don't think they play fair. Mm -hmm. Um, no, if you look at the market, for instance, in Scandinavia, for the moment, the royalty pays to uh, 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 performers are 20% above what they were five years ago. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, you know, one artist receiving all the royalties for the Scandinavian market, I feel it's fine. Um, we also have a long story with, with tech companies. We, you know, Edison build a uh, I don't know the word in English. Uh, first photogram. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, and it's continued to be like that. We without without um, the tech industry, we will not be able to. Yeah. We still have you know to 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 publish sheet papers to be able to release our music. So we love techies. Um, I think it's a question of finding the right balance between the interests of the various groups, stakeholders. And, uh, and you start with respect. Um, too many birds' names have been said, I feel, over the years. And, um, and, and frankly, um, if it was a bit of common sense, um, 
I think things could could be could be um, could be, but could, could be right. I think the politicians do not understand sometimes the the, the um, what they have in their hands. Mm -hmm. uh, talking of um, um, safe harbor for the moment, uh, I mean, everyone seems to be safe except the creators. Um, so we, do, uh, we I'm, I'm not sure we 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 supposed to protect. Um, and, and do you trust? How, what's your take on the, the trust involved in all of the new digital systems that exist? In one level, there is more accountability. It's harder to deny artists' income because it's more traceable. We but did. because you can't see things shifting around physically, it's potentially also easier to hide. I, I know there were prayers. problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have evidence of problems about 10 years ago. Um, we have uh, we we create a collective society. I know it's not very fashionable these days, but we were a bit lonely when talking to uh, uh, the Gafa people. So um, we decided we would be better off if we were joining force together. Um, so we create a co company called Merlin, and Merlin negotiate on our behalf with many of the big players, um, which we believe is not easy. But again, what we received in terms of contractual terms are reasonable. They're not outrageous. And uh, we actually did uh, audit two major players in the music industry, in the internet, over the last three years, and the level of mistakes we found. One of them, we found a mistake, uh, but essentially uh, it had no economical... Uh, uh, for the moment, what we've seen is fair. Uh, what we receive is transparent. We received... Uh, from the major players we receive for the moment, um, every day, all the transactions. Uh, we, have, um, we are my company. Um, we issue statements to artists with every, every transaction as well. So usually they're complaining now because it's too much information. <laughs> uh, they're complaining because we killed trees, uh, which we could avoid, I agree. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't think it's that bad. Mm -hmm. And let's think about, well, let me ask you, what are the ways it could be better? So I can imagine, um, well, if we have the starting point that we want creators to be paid well, um, what else can be done? Should we be looking at issues like the tax system and not just looking at, at how you structure copyrights and licenses? Like, should there be more systems where people consider tax credits for artists or other forms of support that mean that creators are able to live and create, but where you're not asking too much of what is obviously sometimes a fragile digital business environment? Where I would also say that the digital companies, when they dive in, they, their aim isn't to not pay artists, but sometimes things don't work out. There are lots of failures in that world. How fun. Well, first of all, maybe I, I came off a bit negative. I'm also <laughs> positive, and I do respect everyone in the value chain. So, but I would say, for us, one of the most important things would be making us a bit stronger and having a better balance. Mm -hmm. And by that, you would have easier... Uh, it's easier to have trust. So mm -hmm. I would have legal uh, provisions for, for fair contracts. Mm -hmm. That is something that would be extremely important for the creators. Mm -hmm. Having fair contracts that would, if not ensure, at least facilitate for a, for a much, well, better uh, cooperation in the future and also for us to be able to create. I fully agree. That's why we, we, we also have, um, in Europe, we work together with a trade association called Impala and uh, it's a winner at the international level. And all the rec uh, not all, but most of the independent record companies have actually issued a fair digital act mm -hmm. whereby we call, we call for transparency. We is a, is a quite extensive piece of paper which has been published, ratified by most of our members uh, and used by lawyers. When we go into the negotiation, of course, they say, you sign this piece of paper, I suppose you're going to put it in the contract which you say no, <laughs> but, but you're in a difficult position. So I agree, and, um, and, and I think for the moment, um, one of the problems is, is the absence of transparency of the majors, mm -hmm. and they, they're actually polluting the, the, the entire world, including the image of, of, of my sector, which is the music sector, mm 
because I think if they were changing the, the way they come to artists um, uh, with a bit more transparency, everyone will be more happy and we will have a better image. Now, now John, one of the big challenges, if I can put a couple of words in your mouth, Please. running a big organization <laughs> like Digital Europe is it's full of big individual beasts who often want to do things their own way or don't always have an overlapping interest. Um, but I wonder what extent there is some kind of common interest among your members to sort of generally support a uh, content and creation ecosystem. So not um, through individual policy positions necessarily, but, but somehow working to make sure that, you know, that there is a, a better atmosphere yeah. and more encouragement for, for creators in Europe. I, I think there's a, you know, when you've got 60 big tech companies and associations from every country of Europe and a little bit beyond, you know, Norway, Switzerland, uh, Ukraine, for instance, I mean, clearly you get a diversity, you get a diversity of views. But, you know, go back to what I said at the beginning, um, it's in pretty much everybody's interest in the, in the tech sector that we have vibrant uh, supply of uh, material that people want to access. So it, I think it only varies really on how important the consumer market is to their business model because not for not all of my members is this um, of, of direct interest. I mean, our members range across the whole of the application of digital to Europe's economy and society. And as I think uh, in the last panel was mentioned, um, if you think platforms in, in this industry are important, wait till we really get into the debate about platforms in the automotive industry, then, you know, then you will see things uh, heat up. And I, th and I think that that's, uh, you know, absolutely right. For many of my members, um, the creative and content industry is just one sort of uh, uh, industry sector, and it does, it does uh, vary. Um, but, I mean, f for... At the risk of us all being sweetness and light and agreeing with each other, let's, let's throw some sort of controversial subjects in and see what my panellists uh, think about them, you know, if I, if I may. So, first of all, I think the, co the concept of fair is a strange one. It's hard, isn't it? I think it's right. I think I'm right in saying that the economists won't use the word fair because it, no. it means so many different things to different people. And maybe... Uh, what we should be searching for instead is um, sort of happiness or, or more than satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So what we want is people in contractual arrangements that are at least satisfied, if not happy, if not delighted. I mean, because an ideal contractual arrangement is one where everybody feels that it's win-win. So mm -hmm. I think this idea of fairness and value gap and these things that mm -hmm. we're hearing more, uh, I think, less from the creators and more from um, the political sphere... I think those, you know, we ought to dig into those and, and talk instead more about um, satisfied partners uh, to a deal. And I also think, um, I don't know if you're going to come on to it afterwards, but this idea that uh, somehow we should have levies on streaming services in some way to compensate. I don't know if you're going to come on to that. Well, let's talk about it. Shall we? I mean, a YouTube because, tax um, <laughs> Because um, it, this is one of these things that strikes me as... Um, you, I come from, you might be able to tell, from the UK, where we didn't have that concept. So when mm. I first uh, got involved in this issue of uh, levies, it seemed like a very strange, like, stealth tax to me. I mean, it's something that consumers pay that on the whole they don't realise that they're paying, and why should mm. they be paying? And it's one of these things that's transformed from a genuine compensation for something, you know, mm. cassette tapes. Do you remember cassette tapes? I you probably don't, actually. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it... it dates back to those days, but these days it's become like a source of income that people rely on, um, yeah. almost like a, a window tax, yeah. uh, you know, in the old, I don't mean... Is, is there anyone out there who wants to defend or discuss yeah, copyright levies? Because they, they do strike me as very distorted from their original purpose. Yeah. Good, we've got a bit of a disagreement <laughs> yeah. on the panel, then at least. Yeah. Good, okay, jump in, guys. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't, I'm not going to take time in defending it, but it, I would be interested in someone giving an alternative that would be even better for the creators. That's mm -hmm. fine. I don't care about but, but, if it's a private but does copying... does the money from the copying levies well, go I to the creators? Well, I buy absolutely everything, mm -hmm. but I don't buy them in the UK because it's the same price as in Sweden, but in Sweden, I know that a part of it, and it's a very tiny little bit, mm -hmm. Goes to the creators. That's fine. But it's not, mm -hmm. that's not really what it's about. But how does it get to them? How, how do you get listed as a creator? to get a bit of an iPad? Through analogy uh, mm -hmm. from, from as a professional where you have, uh, you go through 
whatever has been listened to or sold in, yeah. in different areas. But I'm not saying that that is perfect. But it that, comes that out of that perfect. collecting society info. It's Absolutely. not a government register that says no, you no, are now a creator. No, not at all. But what I'm saying is that should focus be on trying to give, to maximize the profits of the tech industry even more? Or could we please just concentrate on saying, how can we create something even better for the creators yeah. and the performers? Definitely. I mean, that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. Yeah. To me as a creator, I don't really care about the formats. And very sorry, I have to say, I don't really care about the companies being middlemen right now. They're probably gone, most of them, in a few years' time or five years' time. That's fine. Uh, I want me and my colleagues to be able to create in the future. Yeah. I want diversity and I want the consumers to have the freedom of choice to choose whatever they want to listen to. I, I will obviously share. I, I will share exactly what you've said. Um, as a publisher, what is important is the way. Um, am I making enough money in synchronization rights? I don't know. I mean, there are years where my people perform quite nicely, and we're doing a lot of sync, and years where we our music for whatever reason is out of fashion, and we're making less things. Should we should we stop receiving? Synchronization music, because it's part of a film, and not the music itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, why not? We can. We can. It, 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 my job is very simple. I receive money from a hundred source, mm -hmm. uh, including table, including <laughs> table ladies. Sorry, <laughs> doesn't sound very simple. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it, it, no, it is at the end of the day. Because I have to evaluate how many synchronization I'm going to make in every country. I, I, we have to test to uh, iTunes, Spotify, uh, sales, vinyl, um, cassettes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and tape levies. And with this, I have a budget. I use that budget to decide how much I'm going to risk next year in new production and new publishing. Mm. If someone wants to diminish the size of the pie to get a bigger pie, fine. I will simply have to release less artists mm. and publish less work. Yeah. It's not a question of me trying to eat in your pie. It's simply a question of surviving. No. We, we, it has been said also during another panel that uh, copyright, why? Why the fuck is they staying 70 years after that? Blah, blah, blah. Catalog, after five years, is a news. It's not true. Every year for the moment, 60% of my revenue are coming for catalog sales. Mm -hmm. And if I had no catalog sales, no tape levies, I would have problems to release new artists. Mm -hmm. So the new generation of people actually so do the create the living. because because thanks of the revenue of 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 the of the ancient. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm in favor of tape levies, not tape levies as such. If someone wants to change it in subsidies, fine, I don't care. Mm -hmm. But at yeah. the end of the day, I feel tape levies are um, a writer than subsidies because on subsidies is everyone. Uh, uh, every taxpayers, uh, when when so when you buy this levy is somewhat targeted. Yeah, when you buy a machine that can reprodu reproduce sound recordings, mm -hmm. it's not. Um, I find normal that actually you paying a tiny piece to the creators community. Now, we've got the pen holder from DG Connect in the room. That's that's the word I've been passed. So I'm wondering whether I could wrap up the panel by asking each of you if you've got one message or one request for Claire from DG Connect before, uh, before these proposals hit our desks, possibly, possibly in September, I'm guessing, but certainly in the next few months, either way. Alphonse. I would like to say that the first euro invested does not come from publishers or anyone else. It comes from us, the creators. When we create the content, and we invest with our content, and we do it in startups, we do it in other companies and business models, that is where you need to put the focus. So you need to make sure that we are able to create, and I will say it again, 
we need fair contracts, and fair is not that strange, actually. Fair, to me, is something that is long-term sustainable for everyone in the value chain. That's it. Michel. I like the word fair. We're going into, um, um, we're trying to establish a campaign on uh, fair trade, mm -hmm. um, saying that independent music is like fair trade. Um, so yes, I, I feel um, transparency and fair, fair contracts should, should be the norm. Uh, and also uh, people using our copyright on the net should also accept um, fair, treatment, fair treatment and we should, we should receive the fair payment and not on a, on a value gap, on a fair value. Very well said. But, uh, it's, it, you know, the one thing when there are so many things to ad address, uh, Ryan, is quite a tricky one. But um, one, of the, one of the principles that we use where, when we're thinking, is this a good thing or not? And I know this sounds a bit um, like 101, but let's go back to basics and decide what we're trying to achieve. And I think um, good value to creators has got to be one of those things as efficiently as possible. And I don't... Not only do I not have the answers, I don't think it's my job to, to have the answers, but I think that ought to be our principal good value to creators in order that we keep this vibrant system going. And um, one of the things we see a lot in digital, a lot, and I think it's not unique to digital, it's actually part of disruption and change, is that the, whenever there's disruption and change, and digital causes that a lot, um, the people who come out of the woodwork are those who are beginning to lose things through this disruption, and they have the loudest voices. So just be careful to keep the focus on what we're trying to achieve and not listen to the voices particularly, I mean, disproportionately to those who are going to lose. Just to accept the fact that disruption is going to be uncomfortable, we have to take people with us. I remember somebody in the UK government saying to me some years ago, you know, it's not that government picks winners, it's that losers pick government. <laughs> and, and I think there's something, there's something in that. Well, I, I don't want to end on too negative a note there, but it reminds me of a, a book that I got given, um, and it was basically, I mean, the, the point of the book was to say that, you know, writing is not an easy profession or a vocation to, to get involved in. Um, and so, yes, work hard at it, try, try all of these different tactics. But, you know, some people just aren't meant to be writers. And so there is an element of that in the creative industries as well, which mm. is, yes, people need to be rewarded for, for good works, but not every work not is every good, and therefore it doesn't automatically deserve reward. I think we um, can count you in the good writers group. Though, <laughs> Ryan, <I think. laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen. Um, that thank was you. a pleasure having you on stage. Thank you. Thank you.